With economic growth in Africa outpacing the global average, the continent's industrial base has the opportunity to leapfrog developed markets through implementing the latest technologies, policies and infrastructure support programs. As Africa industrializes further, the continent has the ability to avoid the mistakes made by developed economies who entrenched unsustainable systems. This next piece explores the work being done by the Stellenbosch Innovation District around the challenges of sustainable development in Africa. Innovations in science and technology will be vital for tackling today's global challenges, from poverty alleviation to reducing the effects of climate change. This message was the key takeaway from the United Nations Economic and Social Council's annual session in Geneva this month. The challenge is that innovation brings about change, and change can often be resisted. Innovation definitely hurts, so innovation should be more than just a BR slogan. And innovation hurts because it means you have to change. And especially successful companies have really big problems in changing. Because, I mean, just imagine, I mean, you own a business, well-going business. So why should you change? You have a nice profit margin, you're doing well, your people are doing well, they feel confident, so why do change? And actually, you have to change because the environment is changing, because technology is changing, because demand from society is changing. And that means this dynamic environment needs innovation, needs alternatives in order to survive in future. Africa continues to export raw materials and import finished products of greater value. For Africa to climb the value chain and become competitive in global markets, it's essential for the continent to develop its productive capacity, often through improved technology. So what the SID is essentially about is really uh, a concept uh, in the making of how do we build capacity for African technologies? What does it mean for African uh, futures in terms of, of, of building the, the spaces and the places and the communities um, where we can start building our own technologies. When I talk about our own technologies, it doesn't mean that we're not going to use European technologies. It just means that we're going to build the skills base and develop and adapt those technologies to, to African climates, which in, which in a way um, creates a whole uh, value chain around new technologies. South Africa, like many African countries, is characterized by a dual economy where both technically advanced and primary sectors coexist. With economic growth bringing about rapid urbanization, the continent has a unique opportunity to develop economic hubs in a more sustainable manner than developed economies. Well, you are now, you, you still have to develop your cities much further to get people from out of the slums into the cities. There will then be the questions, what, what kind of housing systems will they, will they work, uh, live in? What kind of transport will they use? Will it be public transport or will they all go own their own car? I mean, South Africa is a specific case, but in China they're massively going now to just internal combustion engines which means they're building highways, which means they're, they're locking them, themselves into a particular transport paradigm. If you compare it to India, they're, they're, they're trying to go different paths. They try, of course, they, they're, they're rich people also try to go for cars, but they try to develop public transport and rickshaws and public uh, tr trains and railways as well. So these are the kind of choices you can lock into the unsustainable technologies or try to go to the more renewable ones as well. Innovation becomes particularly important when it comes to the energy sector and the generation of clean energy in the context of global warming. In many cases, there are significant barriers to entry for newly established renewable energy producers. Well, in the energy domain, it's, it's very often about regulations and it's about taxes and subsidies because markets are uh, created partly through these regulations and subsidies and the, 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 the big incumbents have really close alliances with the political elites. So they are able to, to create loopholes in the regulations which fit them. They, they're able to prevent new entrants from, from getting access. Because if you generate your own electricity, then you need to feed it back to the grid. You need to reach agreement about the, the, the feed-in tariffs, how you're being paid back. These are all scopes of scope for the, for the incumbents to make life difficult for the new entrants. Professor Gilles argues that the green energy sector is not yet strong enough to push policymakers into implementing regulation that would create a more enabling environment for renewable energy producers. Well, it is going to be a, it's going to be a struggle between business, small, the renewable business getting stronger, then getting more people employed there, then they get more political power, then they're being taken more seriously by the by the political elites. So it's partly about business spilling over to politics. Then you get new regulations, creating new markets, which then lead to market growth. So it is going to be an evolutionary process of gradual upscaling. 
But it, it, it again, like the previous speaker said, it, 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 it causes pain. And in, in Denmark, they pay a lot of money. And in, in, in Germany as well, the renewable feed-in tariff means that the taxpayers do pay a lot of money for the renewable energy. So shifts to renewables don't come for free. With abundant coal supplies, South Africa meets around 80% of its energy needs through burning fossil fuels. With new coal power stations under construction, the country has yet to exploit its abundant wind, hydro and solar resources. Green technology is just one of the industries which stands to benefit from increased levels of innovation. Ultimately, projects such as SID have the potential to become central in the evolution of Africa's economy.